Hi, it's Ben Howard here. I wanted to share with you how the new Power BI project file type can be used to hack the settings with regard to Power BI visuals. Now, I'm not advocating just hacking for the sake of it, and I should say that this solution is totally unsupported and you use it at your own risk. Okay, with the preamble out of the way, let's have a look at the customer issue I was facing. My customer was using a bar chart with small multiples. If you're not sure what small multiples are, I previously blogged about them here. The link's available on the screen. Let's go and build our small multiples chart. I've taken a set of random sales data. In this case, we're showing sales by date in this column chart here. Those sales are split across eight segments, channel partners, charity, education, etc. Now, if I wanted to see the split of sales by segment on the chart, I could show the segment in the legend, but as you can see, that gives a somewhat confusing chart. So instead of showing the segment in the legend, I can move it into the small multiples field. You can now see I have one small chart per segment. So the top row is the channel partners, the second is charity, etc. And it's easy for me to compare the volumes of sales for each segment across any particular month. Now the issue I have is, and if you go to a format option you can see it, in the layout I can only have a maximum of six rows. I cannot increase this value at all and I've got a max of six columns, giving me a maximum, a theoretical maximum of 36 charts, i.e. six by six. Now, because I'm limited in the user interface to set a maximum of six rows, then to see rows seven and eight, I have to scroll down, which means it's difficult to compare channel partners and charity to say mid market and small business. So here's the hack to show eight rows with no scroll bar. First of all, you have to have enabled the Power BI project save options in the preview settings. I'm recording this in March 2024, so this feature might just be on by default when you come to use it. Then you have to save your file as a .pbip file, i.e. a Power BI project file. Now, this splits the file into two folders, one which contains the data called your file name .semantic model, and one which contains the report, visuals, etc. called your file name .report. In the your file name .report folder, you'll find a report.json file, and it's this file you need to edit. I'm going to open that in Notepad, and I'll search for the definition of the visual by searching for the visual title, which was sales by segment and date. I found that's the easiest way to navigate around. Now that I've found that visual, I can search through that portion of the JSON and I can see that I have a field called row count, which is set to six, and one for columns, which is set to one. I'm going to change the row value from a six, two, and eight. Save the file and then open it again in the Power BI desktop. Now you can see that I have eight rows and I can compare channel partners and charity with mid-market and small business because I can see them all without scrolling. Now, beware, if you go into the formatting options for this visual and you mouse into the row value, you'll be restricted again between the values of one to six. Now, I've also tested this with one column and 36 rows. That didn't work, but two columns and 18 rows did, though there was no space to display the x-axis labels. Three columns and 12 rows worked perfectly and does display the x-axis, as did four by 12, which is 48 charts in total, above Microsoft's theoretical limit of 36. So the takeaway is to ensure you test this thoroughly before you publish your report to production and also think about how it might display on a small device, such as a phone or tablet, if your users use those. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and let me know how you get on in the comments.